How's it going guys? This is the last video in the course. If you've made it from the beginning to the end, then congratulations on making it this far. And there's really only one thing left to do, and that is to sell your contract. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to sell your deal so that when you get a contract, you're not flailing around, hyperventilating, and uh, going on Facebook screaming that you got a new contract and you have no idea what to do with it, like this guy. We want to be calm and cool and come off like we do this business all the time and it's no big deal. So let's get into it. Hey, it's Kyle Crayson and in order to break this down thoughtfully, I have it broken down into four sections. How to price your deal, the rules, where to shop your deals, and how to talk to buyers. That's going to be the four sections in this video. If you're excited about this one, don't forget to turn that like button blue, subscribe to the channel so you see videos in the future, and uh, hit the bell. This may be the last video in this course, but this is definitely not gonna be the last video I'm making. So I hope you're enjoying the content, and if you have any ideas for other types of content that you might wanna see, um, drop a comment, let me know. All right, so the first thing is pricing your deal. There's really two schools of thought on this one. First, you have the price at high types, so they are going to really push the boundary on their asking price. Say that you know a fair deal is probably around like 85,000. Maybe you shop it out for 95,000, hoping that there's somebody that's gonna, that you're gonna find somebody willing to pay that. They might have otherwise only offered like say 85,000 because you shopped it out lower. Second option is to price your deal a little bit low. So if you think it's fair at 85,000, Maybe you started off at like 79 so that you get a lot of people calling you, texting you, hitting you up about the property that are interested. This is just gonna allow you to get more action, get you in front of more cash buyers so you can practice and, uh, and also build your list. When it comes to pricing your deal, here is what not to do though. Here is absolutely for sure don't do this. You get a property, say it's a fair deal at 85,000 and you get it under contract for 82,000 and you're like, well, I don't care. I'm making $20,000 on every deal. And then you send it out at like 102, 102,000, where it's just like, it's ridiculous. It's not even a deal anymore. You're either doing that because you just want to make a lot of money, or maybe someone told you to do that. But if you continuously just tack on $20,000, sometimes you will probably sell that deal and nice job negotiating. That's a sweet deal. But more times than not, what's probably gonna happen is you're gonna price it too high, no one's gonna call you, and it's not gonna look good if you do that enough times in a row and your numbers never make sense. So definitely don't be afraid to shop it out and push that envelope as far as pricing if you wanna go that strategy, but if you go too far, it's not a good idea. And don't be afraid to shop it out a little bit low because you'd be surprised. Buyers will come back with their offer and you have it low, say, Instead of 85, you put it at 79,000. They'll come back and they say, well, you, can you do 76,000 for it? And then you might be like, well, you know, I no, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be waiting at least until the end of the day, the day tomorrow. And then you'd be surprised how many people call back five minutes later and say, well, listen, what if I could offer you like 83,000? And so, you know what I mean? They're going to naturally, if it's a deal, people will naturally bid it up to what that property is actually worth themselves. You may not really even have to do anything except just delay. Often delaying is enough for them to bid themselves up. My recommendation is to price it a little low, but again, experiment, do whatever you want to do uh, when it comes to this one. There's no real right or wrong. I just like to go the low route and get more action on my deals. The next thing we want to talk about are some rules. So when you send out a property, you want your process to be the same over and over. You want buyers to kind of be trained. How do I contact you? Do I email you or text you? You know, is there a certain time that you want me to do any of this stuff? Things like that. So follow the same process every time you send out a deal. And we're gonna create a template. Actually, in a different video, we created a MailChimp template. We'll talk about that later. Follow some rules every single time. And the first rule, is to put a deadline on your offers. So when you send it out three days later, so say you send it out on a Monday, in your campaign, say all offer offers must be submitted by Thursday, blah, 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 2020 by 5 p.m. And then what that does is it doesn't give people all day to sit and think about it. It's kind of like when, you, when you're dealing with a seller that's wanting to sell the house 
you don't make an offer and then say, okay, well, I guess just let me know if that ever works for you. Hopefully what you've done is beforehand, you've said, hey, I can make this offer, but I'm actually going to look at a couple other properties. This will be good for maybe like two days, but if we're not going to buy this one, then we might be buying one of those. So I can't guarantee your offer will be around forever. And then they'll be like, oh gosh, all right, I got, I got, I better make up my mind in, in a couple of days. Same concept here when you're putting a deadline on your offers. All right, the second rule, and I could probably make a separate video on this, sharing you mistakes that I've made in the past with this one, uh, is do not assign too early. Wait at least two full days after you send it out before you pick a buyer for your property, at least two days. And this one is kind of a tough one because what happens is you send it out and it's a deal. You're gonna have people calling you and then here's one that I get a lot is a buyer will call and they say, so say the asking price was 79,000. And they say, all right, well, what if I give you the $79,000? Can you, you send over the contract? It's like, well, I actually, I, I typically wait at least, you know, uh, I wait a little bit of time. You know, I'm not sure I'm still waiting on some other offers, especially if you just send it out. You get off the phone with them, you're like, yeah, no worries. Like, answer any questions they have. They'll get off the phone and they'll say, okay. And then often what happens is they'll call you back and they'll up their offer if they really want the property. And they say, listen, what if I give you $82,000 for the property? You know, would that work? And then you would say, well, you know, I, I'm, I, I wait at least a couple days before I pick an end buyer. And then this is what I get sometimes is they'll say, well, that 82,000 is the price that I was giving if I could buy it today. So I don't, I don't know if I could do 82,000 in a couple days to, to try to press you. And then my comeback to that is always, well, I actually just got off the phone with another investor and I told them that I was gonna give them at least to the end of tomorrow before I assign the contract. So I'm not gonna break my word with them just like I would never break my word with you but I have to wait until at least the end of the day tomorrow. And they might act a little bit annoyed, but they're not they're not gonna go anywhere. So you, you just gotta play the game with them, right? This whole thing is just a game. Don't take it personally. They want the house for a low price. You're trying to sell it at a high price. Just have fun with it. All right, third is where to send your deals out at, where to shop your deals. Really, there are two main places I do this. So the first one is Facebook investor groups. And you're probably already familiar with most of these Facebook groups anyways, because if you've done the, uh, the previous video where you're looking for cash buyers, you're gonna already have done that in these Facebook groups where you're gonna post the deal. So be sure to go to those Facebook groups and make sure you follow the group rules. Some groups are different than others. Sometimes you need to put an asking price, sometimes you don't. You almost always need to put the exact address, which is kind of scary. I didn't like doing that at first because I thought people were gonna try to snake my deal but I haven't had an issue with that to this point. Feel okay doing that, giving out the address in these Facebook groups, and I think you're gonna be all right. In your post, and I'm gonna put an example up while I talk here. In your post, put you know the property, your asking price, some, some details about the property, and then put up some pictures there so that they can at least see the property, see if they're even interested before they do any more research. And uh, you'll have a nice looking ad on Facebook. Uh, just follow the, uh, the example that I'm giving here and, and you're gonna look good. Also, we're gonna include a MailChimp campaign link, which you can see at the bottom of the example. And we're gonna do that next. So I actually create the MailChimp email campaign and send that first, then I go post on Facebook. So MailChimp, you've probably heard of it. You may have already come across it. Um, you may have even heard of it from some of my previous videos. But it is free, up to 2,000 people in your database, which are gonna be cash buyers. I still don't even have 2,000 cash buyers. I still have never paid a single thing for MailChimp and their templates, you can build whatever you want to make it look really professional. I actually, I'll put a link above here to a video I made on exactly how to build the actual exact template that I use to send out deals. And the fourth thing is how to talk to cash buyers. We've kind of already done it a little bit. I've given you some examples of some things you can say, but I wanted to kind of to break this down a little bit more. So firstly, that game that we were talking about earlier in the video, be prepared to play that game. Their buyers are not necessarily your friends. They could be friendly and whatever, but they might just be trying to butter you up so that they give you give them discounts on properties 
or they're just trying to be nice. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to play games most of the time. So like another example I had, I went to show a property and it was an open house. So I was having a lot of people show up and I had like seven people show up to this house. And um, the, the first buyer that got there, he's by himself. I'm like, yeah, man, we could go walk it. He had never met me before anything. And we're walking and he goes, ooh, your price, you know, that's kind of high. You know, we're gonna have to pay probably like $7,000 in, in title, title fees on this one. And I'm like, so he, he walks past me and I'm kind of trailing behind and I was like, I was like, who's your title company? I've never had closing costs anywhere near that. And he like kind of just under his breath kind of turns, looks back to me and kind of goes, yeah, no, I've never paid that either. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> what? Then why are you even saying that? It made no sense, but I just kind of, I rolled with it. We kept on going. And at that point on though, he didn't mess with me anymore. We walked the property. That was enough to like, they'll test you in different ways. Just be prepared for that kind of stuff. Don't take it personally and just move on with them. You know what I mean? So there's really not, I don't have a script for talking to cash buyers, but what I can give you are three tips when it comes to actually communicating with them. Tip number one is be transparent about the property and the, and, and the situation that they're getting into. They're gonna be buying this property. If there's a tenant there, what's the rent? Is the tenant on time? Is there anything that they need to know about? Get that information and be upfront about it. You know, is there a hole in the, in the floor in the kitchen that they don't know about? I imagine they're gonna walk a property and probably see it. But if you know that information ahead of time, share that. A cash buyer is not gonna act, they're more likely to act in bad faith if they think that you're hiding something. So to get around that, just be trustworthy. Tell them what's going on with the property, even if it negatively affects the property and what they might pay for it. Tip number two is never appear needy. This is just like when talking to sellers too. You don't wanna be, oh yeah, we're looking to buy your property. Yeah, we could pay this. You don't, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna seem needy. Even if you have no other offers except theirs, act like you still have multiple offers. This is another reason why I like to price my deals a little bit low, is so that I know I have other offers. So that that neediness factor, I don't even have to fake it. Because if this guy backs out or wants to start acting funny or this cash buyer, I can just be like, well, listen, it doesn't sound like we're gonna be a good fit. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take another offer. You can always just walk away if you have other offers. So you wanna make sure that you don't come across needy. And one way to do that is to get a lot of offers by pricing your deal a little bit low. And the third thing is really less of what to say and more of what not to say. So I never tell a cash buyer what I have, what I have a property under contract for until after they send over their official offer. And then I'll send over the original purchase agreement along with the assignment contract so they can see exactly what they're getting into with the original contract. So again, that's part of being transparent. Some people don't do that. That's just how I do that. If I send that over and they come back and they start to complain about my assignment fee being too high, or you know what, I need to drop the price because of this or that and it doesn't make sense, I will let them know that that's not, first of all, that has never happened to me. Probably because I just make it you know, I'm upfront, transparent, whatever. And I guess they just, I've never had that issue, but I've, I've heard a lot that other people have. If a buyer decides to count the money in your pocket, they made their offer based on what works for them. Why does it matter how much money you're getting paid? If they're the only offer, I suppose do the deal. If you have other offers, maybe consider doing another deal and being like, well, listen, I can get, I'll just take this other offer. It's no big deal if you don't, if you don't like what we got going on here. And then I probably would try not to do work with someone like that anymore. I don't know, maybe that's too rigid. I don't know, but that's that's kind of how I would handle it. It's not worth the headache in my opinion. And all right guys, that is a wrap for this course. Again, if you made it to the end, you're going places, you're a learner, it's awesome that you're taking the time to do this. Um, drop a comment, connect with me on Instagram. You're the type of person that, um, that I wanna connect with and, and have around, you know what I mean? Someone that's trying to grow and do stuff for themselves. And since that's the end of this course, I was wondering what kind of other content, so I'm still gonna be creating content on this channel, but what kind of content would you like to see? Best of luck getting deals. If you have any comments or, or if you have any questions, don't forget to drop them in the comments. Thanks for hanging out and uh, I'll see you on the next video.